And so I just want to start a little bit with the, um, you all asked me to, to, to talk a little bit about building strong connections and healthy relationships in Krishna consciousness. So I wanted to, uh, to use a verse from the Bhagavatam as a sort of a springboard and also uh, chant a little to invoke the mercy of Prabhupada. Jaya Raja Madhava Pujabhiyari Jaya Raja Madhava Pujabhiyari Kopi Janavala Pa So, uh, we're going to be reading just to start off a little from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 30. And uh, this is a really, really beautiful uh, verse that kind of gets us into what Krishna is very pleased with when devotees connect. Um, and so this is a Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 30, Text 8, The Activities of the Pachetas. Sri Bhagavan Vacha, Varam Vinidam Bajanvo, Yuyam Menurepanandana, So hard de Napitag Dharmas, to Stoham Sor Denavaha. The Supreme Personality of God has said, My dear sons of the King, I am very much pleased by the friendly relationships among you. All of you are engaged in one occupation, devotional service. I am so pleased with your mutual friendship that I wish you all good fortune. Now you may ask a benediction of me. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Sri Swami Prabhupada. Since the sons of King Prachi Nambahishat were all united in Krishna consciousness, the Lord was very pleased with them. Each and every one of the sons of King Prachi Nambahishat was an individual soul, but they were united in offering transcendental service to the Lord. The unity of the individual souls attempting to satisfy the Supreme Lord or rendering service to the Lord is real unity. In the material world, such unity is not possible. Even though people may officially unite, they all have different interests. Even in the United Nations, for instance, all the nations have their particular national ambitions. And consequently, they cannot be united. This unity between individual souls is so strong within this material world that even in a society of Krishna consciousness, um, even in a society of Krishna consciousness, members sometimes appear disunited due to having different opinions and leaning toward material things. So Prabhupada is kind of telling us what the cause of disunity is. Actually, in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be two opinions. There's only one goal, and that is to serve Krishna to one's best ability. If there's some disagreement over service, such disagreement is to be taken as spiritual. Those who are actually engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be disunited in any circumstance. This makes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very happy and willing to award all kinds of benedictions to his devotees 
as indicated in this verse. We can see that the Lord is immediately prepared to award all benedictions to the sons of King Partina Bahamadi. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We offer our respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, who is a student of Sarasvati and very, very dear to Krishna. We offer our respectful obeisance to you, O Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta, the personification of knowledge and devotion. You came to the Western world on the order of your guru to deliver the world from impersonalism and voidism. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Um, and because of your mercy, you're opening our darkened eyes, which were covered with a lot of ignorance. And now we're beginning to see so this topic of uh, building strong connections and uh, relationships in Krishna consciousness is actually probably the most important topic ever because Krishna consciousness really is all about relationships, uh, the re reconnecting. Yoga means to reconnect. Yoga means to reconnect and link up again with Krishna because we lost that connection. And Krishna is uh, the sum total of everything. And so when we connect with Krishna, we connect with everything. And doing that in a healthy way is part of what makes us alive and part of what makes us uh, vibrant and part of us, what makes us grow. <clears throat> in the beginning of our uh, when we were just babies in Krishna consciousness, a lot of times we misunderstood how to love one another and to work with one another and connect with one another because we were thinking that detachment was the goal. And so if we were too attached to anybody, then that wasn't spiritual. But as we grew and chanted, we learned that Really, Krishna consciousness is all about real attachment and love. And Prabhupada said, our Krishna is a great family man, and we have to practice how to be a part of Krishna's family. So that's what we're doing. We're practicing to be a part of Krishna's huge, gigantic family in which every single person in that family is valued and valuable. And so we have, we're learning how to do that, how to value everyone and how to feel valuable ourselves. And we can help each other doing that, which is very important. Because Prabhupada said, practically speaking, I have created this society of devotees for you. So he wanted to create a family sort of structure so that we could have each other and to work together with each other. So this idea of developing relationships should be very, very important. And it starts with understanding our relationship with Krishna as eternally connected lovers, and then expanding that out to all the different people that Krishna puts in our environment, and then having a, a desire to share whatever love we get from Guru and Krishna with others. So it's a very expansive process. Now, it's not so easy in Kali Yuga really to have healthy relationships, though, <laughs> because we have this skeptical personality. A lot of times we have this mistrust and sometimes with good uh, reason, but to go over that and to develop healthy relationships. And I'd like each of us to think about some of the most precious relationships that you have in your life. It could be your family, your spouse, your child, your parents your friends, and all of those relationships were developed over time, over time of interacting together, over time of serving together, over time of sometimes hurting one another and sometimes forgiving one another, and then realizing that, you know, we're not so perfect, so not to expect perfection out of others. So these relationships take time to develop and some of us can get a head start by understanding to that if we expect more out of ourselves than we do anyone else, 
then we, we have a head start. So in a relationship that is based on uh, spiritual uh, foundation, we, we should see ourselves as the servant of anybody else we're related to. In Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita, he kind of explains the, word, the friend, different levels of friendship. Uh, in that verse, Sri Dham Sarva Bhutanam, and he explains that he is the dearest, most well-wishing friend of all living entities. And uh, the idea of friendship having different categories. So Prabhupada, in that purport, he explains that a deep, deep friend that has your interests all the time is your well wishes forever, unconditionally. That's very rare. And the chief example of that is Krishna and his peer representative. They can be sure that deep, deep loving uh, person that you can trust with everything and anything. And then there's uh, Mitra, which is called social friendship. And that's pretty good. These are when we interact with people and they could be neighbors, they could be friends, they could, you know. And there's a, a element of uh, respect there, an element of consideration there. And then Bandhu uh, is another category of friendship, which is like official friend, like a friend that it's like an acquaintance and, you know, you may not have such a deep relationship, but you're going to, you know, treat with some consideration. So the, more, the, the friendships that really, really uh, cause us to soar and to rise as human beings are those deep, unconditional friendships, or at least the, the friendship on the Mitra stage. And so we want to talk a little bit about what is friendship and, and how important it is you know, we have to eat every day and we have to sleep to keep our bodies fit. And we have to, you know, have some interaction with others. But the most important thing is spiritual food. And, you know, often we'll think of spiritual food as coming from studying the scriptures and chanting, and that's perfect. But the, the, the relishing of spiritual food is in association with devotees. And that association has to be carefully nurtured. And we, we want to see how important it is. None of us can really thrive without associating with others and in a deep, loving way. And especially during this time where we're sort of quarantined and crazy and all this stuff, you know, our relationships, our families have a, has to have a deeper meaning and a deeper, it's really Krishna arranging that we go deeper. And I looked at this word, I kind of am a little intrigued by uh, acronyms. So I tried to take the word friend and think about what that meant. And uh, if you break it down in just the letters of it. So I took the F to be frank. You know, frank being a friend, a real friend is someone who's going to be truthful with us, who's going to be honest with us. And then the R is real. Real being the, the, the kind of uh, connotation of how we use that word real today as loyal, committed to the relationship, the real deal. And then I took the I as interested, like a friend has to be interested in what's going on with you, what's going on with your life, what, what, what's happening. The E, encouraging. A real friend is always encouraging, even when they may have to critique us a little bit, but they still ultimately want to encourage. And then the end is non-envious, which is kind of rare, unfortunately, but it's something we want to have because it's really the greatest element of friendship. Uh, Krishna told our journey, he said, because you're non-envious, Arjun. You're my friend. I can tell you anything. You know, I can share the most confidential stuff with you. And D, devoted. A friend should be devoted to you and to your life and to um, uh, uh, appreciating what's important to you. So this word friend, when you break it down into an acronym, it was frank, a friend is frank or real, interested, encouraging, non-envious and devoted. Um, and I'm sure there are other words that can apply to that. So what are some of the challenges to having real friendship and loving relationships, in particular in our movement. Um, and I kind of wish that you all could answer that question and we could talk about it a little bit. Would that be okay, Gayatri, that people kind of- Absolutely, Prabhu, absolutely. Okay. 
So please feel free, either, you know, you can raise your hand in the chat and I can unmute you, or I have given you all privileges to unmute, just to keep an orderly manner. Uh, if you want to say something, feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah. Like, what are, what are some of the challenges to having a real friendship, particularly in our Krishna conscious society? What would you all say are some of the challenges? Well, I'll, I'll start with it. Okay. For me personally, it's been uh, dealing with my own conditionings. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes as a spiritual enthusiast, you're so, you become so inward that you start looking at yourself that you really don't find the time to um, look at the wonderful qualities of others. Mm -hmm. And I often run into this that, you know, when I'm so, I'm so, so much involved in working on myself that sometimes I kind of cut off in a way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so Gayatri, what do you think is the loss for you in that process? How do you lose in that? Because Prabhupada says that you become what you associate with. Okay. I'm going to associate with myself is my growth is going to be stagnant. Yes. Whereas when I'm associating with other Vaishnavas with wonderful qualities and I start seeing their wonderful qualities and I associate with them and their wonderful qualities, it's uplifting. Yes. So the, 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 the downside of not putting the energy into developing friendships is that we don't get to grow as much as we can. We miss out on some of the wonderful things that happen when people cooperate together. And so many of the lessons that we need to learn in our spiritual growth really have to come from interactions with others. And if we don't have those interactions, we do stunt our spiritual growth. It's a very important and powerful point. And the, um, you can get so absorbed in doing, oh, I have to finish my chants or take care of my family or do this or that and read the Bhagavatam. But really valuing the association of devotees as our really most precious gift, ex with the exception perhaps of the holy name that we could ever have. And Krishna gives us to each other. And sometimes he gives us to each other as a test and sometimes he gives each other as just total support. But that friendship, that underlying friendship is so important. And so it's worth reaching out, taking time. And sometimes just a simple thing like putting in a call, the more personal, the better. You know, like a lot of people like to text and all that stuff. And that's okay. I mean, text is probably better than nothing. But for real friendship, because Krishna is so personal and the the gopis and all the devotees is so personal that you know this idea of talking to someone or even writing them a letter like with many both Krishna it's called the lost art these days I it's funny because uh, I like writing letters and I haven't been able to do it in a while but I used to write letters and one of the things people are telling me now they said mother Krishna I have this letter you wrote me 10 years ago and you da, 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 da. and so this that that letter that I took time to write, and I usually write it, not type it. And uh, so, and then with my grandchildren, I had started writing them once every two weeks, not all of them, but one until we make the circle. So different things like that. Little personal things we can do to connect with devotees and take the time and it sort of enriches our hearts as well. So thank you for that, Gayatri. Anybody else, what's a challenge? Yeah, we have Athena has raised her hand. I'm going to unmute you, Athena, please. Okay. Go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Um, I have several, I guess, challenges, and it's also, in one sense, um, I guess seeking your advice when I share this. Um, when we're told that when devotees come together, we're supposed to be only talking about Krishna, so Krishna Kata. And so in one sense, yes, that is our connection. When I have, I'm relatively new to the movement. I've been here for about four years now, but um, when I've met a lot of my, um, I guess, divinity friends through the Bhakti Center. And um, when we come together, it's that encouragement. Yes, we should always talk about Krishna and it's nourishing. But then I feel like you don't really get to know them as people, normal people, maybe even their families, what they 
do, their interests. Um, and it's that fine line that you find that and then getting into Prajalpa. Um, you know, we're not supposed to talk about, uh, you know, anything other than Krishna is Prajalpa. Um, and, you know, as I've grown in Krishna conscious, I also don't find myself enjoying that either. So it feels like it's a, um, not a contradiction, but it's when you mention your, the friend is devoted or they're interested, but then yet that seems like it's not Krishna Kata and then maybe it goes into Prajalpa, but then you're not really getting to know them as human beings yeah i like that atina i am so glad you brought that up sweetie because i think that's such an artificial thing that we do as devotees that we don't understand um yukta by raja how everything about a devotee that's sincere is connected to krishna you know if you study Prabhupada's lilamrit and his interactions with others he would ask the gardener about his flowers and how your garden is doing he would ask the, 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 the electrician about the plugs and the, you know, he would ask something pertaining to that particular individual's ability or talents or experience. And that was Krishna Kata because the pure devotee was sincerely connecting out of, you know, oh. how can you have a friend if you don't know them? Like, you know, I, we had uh, moved into our house when we lived in Cleveland and we lived on that street for a few years and we didn't really know all of our neighbors and i was like this is kind of crazy you know right next door so we just started knocking on different doors and just saying Hare krishna i'm your neighbor across the street or down the road and i just wanted to introduce myself and it was amazing atina how that little thing sort of sparked other people doing the same thing in the relationship so when 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 we understand that anything related to a devotee or concern for a devotee is actually Krishna Kata, and how we want to guide that is we don't want to go negative with it. Like if someone tells you, Atina, I have a headache and you know my back is hurting, and you, your, your immediate response, you, you don't want to just say, oh, let's read the Krishna book. I mean, you may say that, but you should say, you know what? Wow, sweetie, what can I do? You want some tea? You need this? You need... And you connect and then, you know, you figure it out. So if you don't know someone and if you're not willing to be vulnerable, you'll never have a deep level of friendship. Um, so just uh, being aware that we don't want to go negative and talk or gossip so much, but sharing like what's going on with you, with your life, what, you know, how can I help you? Or here's something that's going on with me. Somebody that you can trust and that you have confidential, we should do that. We should know about it. I didn't know that. So just to clarify then, you had mentioned knowing things about the lives of devotees is also Krishna Kata. I yes. was unaware of that. So that's yes. helpful. Yes. Okay. And I, that's you know, amazing. as we grow spiritually, Prabhupada says that, Everything is connected to Krishna, and the more you uh, mature spiritually, you know how those connections work. And when people understand it, Tina, that you just don't have a superficial thing, oh, I just want you to chant Hare Krishna. No, I am actually concerned about you as a person. I am actually concerned how you're doing. I am actually, you know, like that. Then that will, that will open that person more to you, whatever you have to share or offer and these kinds of relationships, when you think about, I don't know how long you've practiced Krishna consciousness, but you had friends before, and what were some of the things that brought you and your friends together? Your shared interests, you're telling each other, you know, like that. So devotees just, the only thing I always just remind, don't go negative and gossip, but yeah, hear about each other and hear from each other and laugh together. And, you know, that's what, those are some of the things that build friendship. Thank you so much. That was so helpful. Thank you so much. Good, good, good. Thank you so much, Krishna and Dini Prabhu. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, so we have Christoph. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Christoph. That's my husband's name. I'm Sachi Priya. Hey, Sachi Sachi Priya. Priya. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, so good to my face. Pretty. I was just looking at some pictures that your children drew for me, Janava and Gopal. No, Gopal wrote me a letter when he was three or four. I still have that. 
And oh. Donovan drew a picture of Krishna with the cow. <laughs> I still have it. Okay, go on now. <laughs> what? I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I was noticing the, the, my theme that I, my challenge with establishing friendships is, is kind of like been a little bit talked about already, but it's that I, I, ha I have trouble, you know, dedicating the time for it, like carving out the time. Yes. You know, I, it's, I, I, let, I let it be a lesser priority. And I wondered if you had any tips about that. It's so good to see you, Matza. I, I love know, you. it's good to see you too. I miss you, sweetie. I do. I just, <laughs> so yeah. much. Um, feel yeah, it. you know, I think that as a busy devotee mother or parent, we all probably struggle with that. But to realize, Sachi Priya, how important this is, sweetie, that it has to be uh, important right along with feeding the children, to be honest, for you and for the children, for them to know the importance of developing other relationships. The, the thing about the ever-expanding friendship of the spiritual world is we all have um, needs and not, not one person could ever fulfill those needs, not even if it was the best husband or the best child or the best wife. And so when we have a variety of different categories, like you've got your children, your spouse, your friends, each one of those feels a really special need in us. And so first of all, I would say that for you to realize how important that is, sweetie, that you have to figure it out. And then sometimes a simple thing like uh, just sending an email, of one or two sentences. People know you're busy, and, but if you took the time, hey, I just was missing you today, I want to say Hare Krishna, hope all's well. Boom. That's a good thing that gets things started. The person could address you back. And you know, the, the, we, uh, we show what's important to us by what we give time to. And part of yours may be, Sachi, that you're so busy serving others that you're not thinking how important your uh, spiritual vibrancy is. So friendship is an important part of that. And so just to think about this is important. And it doesn't mean that I have to do a lot. You know, I don't have to get on the phone and talk an hour to my girlfriend, you know, but just some connection that's regular or steady or send a gift, you know, just a little surprise out of the blue to maintain those friendships. And, and, and we also needed Sachi because we need people that we can talk to and share things that help us when we're going through stuff or when we have something really precious to share. We, to share it enhances the experience. So, you know, try to figure out how you can share the good and the bad with your friends, but just simple. And you'll find that just making an effort, steady, you'll be able to do it a little more and a little more like that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I hope that helps. Yes, it was just the perfect thing I needed to hear that it, that, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's and you don't have to do a lot. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You know, I have one friend, Chintamli, bless her heart. Every once in a while, she'd say, Mata, you don't even have to write this, write me back, but how are you doing? And I love you. You know, and it's such a, a special thing to me when she does that, you know. And so those are important. Uh, any other challenges to friendship? So we have uh, Jai Shri Prabhu. Okay. She said she has a challenge that she wants to share. I'm going to unmute you, Jai Shri Prabhu. Okay. Jai Shri Prabhu. Okay. You're Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Here I am. I was trying to mute and then it was unmute. I don't know, it was all crazy. <laughs> so um, it's kind of similar to what everybody's been saying, but I feel like one of my challenges is um, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I also feel that I'm going to be judged by whoever I'm sharing my struggles and challenges with. And I mean, I've overcome some of those challenges by being vulnerable. It's kind of yeah. like you by doing it. 
Yes. Um, but there's still that fear in me, like, who can I be vulnerable to? Who can I share my struggles with? And that is one of my challenges with creating friendships. It's, it's crazy because I don't have that same kind of fear outside of my Krishna conscious relationships. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that, Prabhu, because, um, you know, I think you know, our Krishna conscious relationships usually are the most uh, intense because we know somehow they're connected to Krishna and somehow that, you know, we're on that track. And um, I love your point because I think that's where a lot of us struggle is being vulnerable, like who to really trust. We have this thing, and, and I love your point that you have to just step out there and do it and then you'll know. Um, you know, the, the, the idea of sending out trial balloons, uh, the idea of sending out trial, trial balloons, like you, you, you may want to share something that's really kind of big, but before you share the big thing, you share something a little minor or not so important just to see. And then if that's received well, then you know you can do something like that. And that's really, a lot of people do that anyway without even knowing that concept. Like how do I begin to know I can trust you? And I think one of the things that we really as a society want to focus on that would please Guru and Krishna is learning how to be confidential friends. Learning how when someone trusts us with something, we, we, we value that trust. You know, we, we, we don't go sharing everybody the thing they told us, even though sometimes you hear devotees don't have secrets. But we do want to have where we could trust whoever we share our secrets with, to know when to share them, when not to share them, and, and get our permission, actually. So this is a very important point. My grandmother used to say, if you want a friend, you must first show yourself friendly. So one of the things we want to make sure we do is that we're trustworthy and that we're confidential and that we respect people when they share different things with us without judgment, you know? Um, because uh, there but for the grace of God go I. We've all done things and said things either in this life or the next, most of us in this life, I mean in the past, that we might wish we hadn't done or didn't happen, but it did and here we are. So this idea of vulnerability is really the essence of real friendship. Like if you're not vulnerable, you can't go to that deeper level of friendship. So sometimes it's a process, uh, Jai Shri, of sort of weeding out because everybody is not at that place where you can't trust them. Um, and some friendships develop over time to something deeper and deeper. Uh, and the idea is a lot of times pray to Krishna to, to send people in your life that you can serve him with. You are, a lot of times we don't realize how powerful those kinds of prayers are. Uh, my brother prayed once, he said, Lord, teach me how to pray, you know. And after that, he started having all these beautiful prayers. So we can ask the Lord to send the right kinds of people in our lives to interact with so that we can serve them in, in their spiritual growth and they can serve us in our spiritual growth. And so we just have to take a chance on the vulnerability. But I would say do it using the trial balloon kind of idea, you know, you share something not so big. And then you listen as well to what other people share to you and make sure you value their confidences too. It's so nice to have real friends that you can just let your hair down. Oh my God. And I think part of why we're not making as much spiritual progress is sometimes we, we, we know the goal of Krishna consciousness and we know we should be a certain way and look a certain way and act and so sometimes we might put a little front up that we're that way, but inside it's all kinds of havoc. <laughs> so to have somebody that could see you with all that havoc and still love you and still, that, that's the most invaluable thing, you see. And so this is the importance of friendship, you know, that you go through a shared experience of good times and bad times and growth and tears. And you forgive each other like that and it helps you to learn. So this idea of being vulnerable is very, very, very important. And it's also, Jaishu, honest. Because Krishna knows everything about us. 
He knows what we do, what we don't do, what we think. So, I mean, if we're not hiding from Krishna, we might as well be forthright with ourselves first and then be able to share that with others. Now, you know, that kind of vulnerability doesn't mean that we should just go tell our whole life history to everybody and all the time. No, it just means things are important, things that cause us some concern. We should be able to share that with somebody who cares about us and who would honor us in a non-judgmental way. And we should be able to give that same association to others. And when we do, our society will be much, much better off. And people will be a lot more spiritually healthy in that regard. So um, this is Urvashi. And Urvashi, Hare Krishna. Good to see you in California. So I just wanted to, that was so nice what you said. And I just wanted to add something to that, please. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, it's like, being a devotee, being Krishna conscious, uh, striving for Krishna consciousness, there's so much um, stress and pr pressure, you know, and, and if you're leading another life, you know, just trying to bring in money and so you're juggling all this stuff. There's a tendency to feel not good enough. Mm. You know, you're just so far off. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you have a friend in Krishna consciousness that you can share with in that way, it's just like, ah, oh, you know, I struggle with this and I struggle with that and I'm just not good enough. What you'll find is other people feel the same way. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're on your own with your struggles, yeah. that it's a common Theme with devotees yes. and just read the prayers of the Goswamis and all these great personalities you can see of course they were on a whole different platform than we are but you mm -hmm. can see that they too were struggling they too didn't feel good enough they too didn't feel connected to Krishna so if we can develop friendships that we can pour our, our heart in that way, you'll find that true friendships share those feelings and you just don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. And in developing a good friend, you're gonna get hurt. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. They won't be the friend you expected them to be. And maybe you revealed stuff thinking you were revealing it to a very dear, confidential friend and it didn't turn out that way but that's okay you know <sighs> if you go out in the rain without a umbrella does that mean you never go out in the rain again <laughs> you know it's just like just go on and keep trying to find those special friends and um yeah and my challenge so and i'd like you to respond to what i just said but my challenge is that you think you're in a friendship and then there's something that maybe you did so-called wrong and then the other person is kind of holding something against you a grudge mm -hmm. and they keep it inside mm -hmm. and me I like everything to be on the table just mm -hmm. to really have an open honest friendship mm -hmm. and then I find that somebody's been carrying this along through this friendship and, uh, you know, and, and I can feel it, but I don't know what it is. That's my biggest challenge is not being totally open and true with each other. Okay. And thank you so much, Irvashi. That was wonderful, Prabhu, what you shared. Um, because the truth is we, we all are endeavoring, we're works in progress. All of us are works in progress. Yes. And like you pointed out, these great pure devotees, they appear to struggle. That's part of the uh, nature of humility. And we never feel that we are there yet. We never feel that we've achieved the level of love for Krishna and service that we should have. 
We never feel that we're so qualified for that service. So that very feeling is the price one pays to, to, to serve, actually. And when you have a friend that you can be open and honest with, my God, it's, it's just, it's, it's a treasure. Oh, yeah. and, uh, you don't have to pretend, you don't have to, you know, they just accept you for the good, beautiful friend you are and whatever you're going through is what part of your talent is. And I would say that when someone, it's interesting you said that, Ravashi, because I was thinking about the most difficult friendship that I've ever had in my life. And um, it has really been a rocky, really rocky road, not in terms of rocky interactions, but just me being surprised by certain people's behavior or what they did or said. Yeah. And for some reason, I never gave up on them. And actually, they never gave up on me, which was good. Um, I would have to, it certain, I finally got to a point where I had to sort of speak. I mean, I had to be hard. And that was so hard for me to be hard and just say, look, this is what has happened. And this is how I'm feeling. And this is what, you know, the situation. And if we can't improve, then what good is this friendship? You know, so that was pretty heavy, but somehow we worked through that. And I would say that today, because we never really gave up on each other, and we, we did tend to be honest. And you know, a good thing to a virtue is learning people's limitations, sweetie. This is important. Everybody is not going to uh, be as open as you are. Everybody is not going to... Uh, be as honest as you are. Everybody is not going to uh, see the importance of this whole vulnerability thing. So you, we have to make choices. Do I still want to be friends with this person, knowing my limitations and knowing their limitations? Because the, uh, the really good, healthy friendship is reciprocal, where you give and you take, and they give and they take. But sometimes we have these friendships where uh, we seem to be doing all the giving and the other person seems to be doing all the taking. So we, we have to come to, uh, am I willing to still interact in this friendship? Or sometimes I have to put it on a different uh, category. You know how we mentioned those three categories, got the Bondis, the Mitchells, and the Surits, and just be okay with that. So being able to kind of analyze the, the level of friendship that you want and that you have with a certain person. On the other hand, it sounds like that, that friendship where this person is carrying grudges is actually not healthy for them or you. So it would be really, really good if you could prayerfully figure out how to just ask them, what did you do and where, is, where was the breakdown? And come from your heart in such a way that they just have to respond and tell you what's going on. Uh, my dear friend and our God brother, Bhakti Tirta Swami used to say, when people are resentful, it's like carrying hot coals in your hand and thinking that the other person you resent is going to be burnt. So we wanna help our people that we care about not to be burnt. Like if they resent us, if there's anything we can do to help them get beyond that, let's do it. And that could bring our friendship on a much healthier level, you know, and be willing to, if you have done something wrong or if you have disappointed a friend, be willing to ask for uh, humble forgiveness and give them space and time how to do that. It's, it's important, you know. That's a quality of a devotee to, to ask forgiveness and to give forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Much rather take the heat from knowing I did something wrong than the silent treatment, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like, what did I do, <laughs> you know? Was it, yeah. Do I own it or do I don't own it? You know, what happened? <laughs> yeah, well, go push it, press it, press it, make it happen. And then, you know, uh, usually, Uvashi, when friendships go through that kind of dynamic of intense kind of hurt and forgiveness, if, if the friendship endures, it becomes a much higher and better quality. So it's kind of worth it to, to work through. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So Thank any you. other challenges? Yeah, we have Elizabeth. Elizabeth, please 
You can unmute yourself. Okay. Haribo, thank you for Hi, having me. Beautiful. I just, I just wanted to share uh, to, I think someone spoke uh, a few questions ago just about being open with non-devotee people that you're close with. Um, I've been practicing bhakti for a couple of years, oh, a few years now, and I, I just don't want anyone to underestimate uh, how beautifully contagious bhakti is in that my best friend of 20 years discovered bhakti it just lit her up i could see a difference in her and then i caught the bhakti bug and then now i'm practicing and our spiritual uh progression has been um very much uh a work in progress together and it's brought us so much closer together so you know and now i have people in my life who are supportive and I'm noticing the challenges of knowing how close you can be to somebody through Krishna consciousness um, versus people that you are, have known just as long, but you just, there's like a little bit of a barrier. And so I just wanted to share, you know, put your, you know, it, it may be worth the risk, you know, sharing, sharing this, you know, whether it's newfound or something that's existed in your life in a long time. Because uh, there just may be, be people in your circle that you don't realize that will be turned on to it. And then, I mean, suppose that's the whole idea, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. One of the 26 qualities of a devotee is that he or she is friendly. Friendly. Not just to human beings, not just to devotees, but to all living entities. That's pretty, pretty deep when you think about it. And people appreciate real, genuine friendship because they appreciate being valued, they appreciate being um, taken as something important, you know, mm -hmm. and this is really good. So, you know, I always say the best example and the best preaching is to be a good example. When people see how Krishna consciousness has changed our lives, has made us better people, more kind, more generous, more loving, not more non-judgmental, then it's an attractive thing because deep down people want that, you know. Who wants to live in a suspicious, skeptical, scary environment? You know, we want uh, to be in an environment where there's loving exchanges and friendship and care that makes so much difference for all of us. So we are the example. And another thing, Elizabeth, too, some of my deepest friends even now, they don't call themselves Hare Krishna. They are Christians or Muslims or some, sometimes a, 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 another uh, alternative spirit. They all are involved in spiritual practice, so I have to add that. Um, and for me, it's interesting because I've learned and grown a lot from interacting with them as well, I'm sure they would say for me. And I understand that Krishna is, they're devotees too, just calling themselves another, you know, term or name. So... Friendship is a uh, uh, very key to a devotee's uh, attraction to others and very key mm -hmm. to our sharing with others, you know. Mm -hmm. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. Okay. So we have uh, Jeshri Radhe Prabhu. Jeshri Radhe Prabhu is also a part of our team. She helps us in organizing. She has a question. And okay, Jeshri Radhe. Hi, Krishna. So, uh, I had a challenge and a question, and the challenge was kind of covered in the last two, three uh, questions and answers was that I actually find it much more easier to build bonds um, with, with you know, non-devotees than with devotee community. Like when I go to work, I'm easily able to connect, but in the community, there is this vulnerability and judgment and that fear because the expectations and bars are too high. But you answered that. Second was, um, you also mentioned this is give and take. Now the devotees that we feel like um, telling our struggles are, are all um, you know, seniors or at a higher uh, stage than us. So there's only we telling them it's not a given there's no reciprocation because they consider us as junior to them you know it's more of mentor and mentee than friendship so does that mean that we can make good friendships only um with devotees at kind of same platform who started with us or growing with us 
um, in Krishna consciousness and, and you know, shouldn't expect to build uh, good connections with, uh, with like people who are ahead of us. Well, you know, the give and take Jai Sri Radha is uh, on a different level when you have a guru relationship, Shitsa or mentor-mentee, but there's still give and take. And the ultimate mentor is actually a friend. And it may not mean that they so much share uh, their personal struggles, although um, a lot of the good mentors and gurus, they will do that because you need to understand that this is what people have gone through to get to where they are, you know. Prabhupada shared his struggles with us. You know, he put his deities away in college. He uh, got gored by a cow. He uh, cried out, you know, he, he shared those struggles with us and we were his disciples. But other, uh, it is a sort of different superior relationship, but it's good to have other friends that are peers that you can talk to. And Jai Shri Radha, it's worth developing those relationships. I'm, I'm saying that's what's one of the most things that I think is missing a lot in uh, our societies is those kinds of healthy peer relationships. And sometimes you have to step out in order to do it, um, but it's worth it. And, you know, different uh, functions like uh, plays and dramas and musical events and, you know, figuring out how to do things where you can have uh, a different aspect of Krishna consciousness uh, shown, you know, the six kinds of loving exchanges between devotees, you know, having prasadam and sharing prasadam, inviting somebody over for prasadam, lunch, or sharing prasadam, and then, you know, giving gifts and receiving gifts. All these things are important parts of friendships. And as we reach out, reach out, make those endeavors, because what you're missing, other devotees are missing. See, and somebody has to start to kind of reach out and change with that dynamics. Uh, so I would say that it's worth it to try to figure out who amongst some of your peer devotees would you want to develop a stronger relationship. And then you can figure out different things you can do to invite them over and you all kind of do something together, distribute books together, figure something out where you can um, see if that's really worth uh, going deeper with. But I would say try at least. Thank you so much, Krishna and Vinita. Prabhu, I just want to mention, you know, if you need to stretch, you need to get up, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stand up just a minute, just a little. Absolutely. Uncomfortable. <laughs> I know y'all no see you doing gymnastics in the chair. <laughs> no, no, we're fine. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable. Yeah, that's better for me to stand up. We're just so grateful to have you. So, yeah. And yeah. we're absolutely okay with you. Yes. Walk around. Take care of yourself. Okay, we can, thank you. We can talk. We can see you. Just walk around. Do okay. what you have to do. <laughs> All right. So another thing I wanted to say was this beautiful quote that Prabhupada had um, shared when he uh, wrote a letter to uh, Upendra. He said, our society is like one big family and our relationship should be based on love and trust. We must give up the fighting spirit and use our intelligence to push ahead. In other words, Prabhupada was really encouraging us to have loving, trust relationships and try to figure out how to fight less amongst ourselves so we can push on this Hare Krishna movement. But the big family, you know, and big families have their things, they go through some stuff sometimes, but they work it out because they love each other. And that's what Prabhupada said too, that sometimes devotees may have a disagreement, but they work it out for the sake of Krishna. And the value of deep, spiritual friendships is on so many levels because as Prabhupada said, we're practicing how to go back home and be a part of Krishna's spiritual family. And not just anybody can get there. You have to be honest and caring. And so all these things that we're doing in our friendships now was demonstrating to Krishna how, you know, how we're getting ready. 
And um, the, the Lord Chaitanya is the ultimate friend in a sense too, because I think it was Prabhupada said that this movement had, is, a, is a symbol of friendship. And in some part, somewhere else he said it's like the gopis too. So either way, because the gopis of course have friendship in their dynamics with Krishna. But this idea of how to go deeper in relationships and value those deep relationships. You see how happy Krishna was with the potatoes. He said, you all got such a loving relationship together. And I know even with my children, like having a lot of children, it really does my heart good when I see them friendly with one another, cooperating with one another. That makes me maybe the happiest in, you know, anything. So as a gift that we also want to give Krishna and give our guru, is these healthy, loving relationships and not being so impersonal with it. Taking time to, to be personal to people, you know, is very good. I see that Chandra Vallabha Prabhu has raised her hand. Uh, okay. Did you have a question, Vallabha Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. I'm also very grateful for the wonderful energy of this discussion and Krishna and Anthony uh, Devi. Thank you so much for your insights. Um, I've, I've been around the movement for a very long time. So sometimes living in the temple and uh, for a while living outside because of different circumstances. And so connected in uh, practice. Uh, I remember talking um, you always have, when you're young and you first joined, you always have to explain to a lot of people, especially family, what is going on? Why are you doing what you're doing with this chanting and, and uh, that, that particular crowd? And it came uh, down to, this is all people who fell in love with the Maha Mantra ah. and with the, sound, with the holy sound, with the holy names, and who have faith that this is like those colorful ribbons that are extended and that, that we can do this dance together. Everyone's holding on to, to the colorful ribbon, like those pagan celebrations where we're, you know, creating um, the, 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 the maypole and so on. And I feel like uh, sometimes we forget uh, kind of both to appreciate the devotees, but to appreciate friendships uh, in general with people who have substance. And that uh, Krishna consciousness is to me, it's like elements, it's available. Uh, so I want to see whether a person I'm building friendship with, how much of just connection with, with God they have. Like you mentioned, the people in your life who have spirituality. So I'm wondering how to be inspired more to have deeper and deeper friendships with uh, Krishna devotees. Uh, because... Um, I've been around the movement for so long that I've experienced behaviors that were uh, very um, low class and coming from someone who on the surface is behaving like a devotee. And, and that including money being stolen from pockets and I mean really a behavior that does not uh, signify a decent human being, let alone devotee. And yet, you know, fostering friendship with spiritual people who never heard of Krishna, but they have the connection. So I'm wondering uh, just how to foster more friendship with devotees. And honestly, now the technology with the quarantine, everyone's saying the same thing. Look at all of us connecting online. Look at this meeting. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I just I want to be that voice that says, I would love to see more of these meetings and friendships and letters. I, I have letters from 20 years ago for a course, devotee correspondence. That was so inspiring, I still keep it. So I would love to be inspiration. I would love to know how to maybe call meetings like that, whether we have networks building up where devotees connect in these study groups. Once a week, I'm part of a Srimad Bhagavatam class that is a women's group that's called by uh, Ramboru uh, Mataji. And so how can we have more of that? Uh, are, do we have devotees who are already building these networks? How can we all connect and find uh, each other uh, around the world? 
Well, very good. I think what the, what the devotees at Vaishnavi Ministry are doing is such an awesome service, connecting Vaishnavis all around the world. And you might want to uh, connect with them to see how you can serve and help the mission that they're doing, because it's such a beautiful one. Also, like you said, just starting uh, meeting groups. It's simple. It could be two, three, four uh, people that you meet on a regular basis, being creative to, to figure out how do we connect with them. Because this is so important. And you know, Krishna, when he does something, is many, many reasons. But one of the reasons for this whole uh, situation that we're going through with the worldwide pandemic is so devotees can figure out more uh, honest, internal, in-depth ways to connect. And look, at, we're, we're doing that, you know, but Krishna wanted that. Um, and he sped up the whole process. So seeing how important it is, because some devotees are isolated, you know, they don't, there's nobody around so much with all this uh, uh, isolation. So these uh, Zoom presentations, these online classes, they're all really good. And, you know, mm -hmm. just connecting with the devotees that are already doing that service and saying, how could you help? Or starting uh, a, a reading group of your own, which you're already a part of. And mm -hmm. also consider how can, you know, your, your first point was that, you know, sometimes we, we have had association in the temples and the communities where we were disappointed mm -hmm. in the behavior. You know, we had thieves and liars and sometimes, but we have to remember that people come into Krishna consciousness with their own baggage and uh, different levels of devotees exist. You have your neophytes, your intermediate, your more advanced. Mm -hmm. But somehow Krishna Prabhupada wanted us to figure out how to all work and help each other. Mm -hmm. And for those who are not, who are so neophyte, the best way is to be a good example and to be honest and to, um, you know, always go into it uh, with the mood of whatever is interaction that happens between me and another individual, what is it that I can do out of that to offer to Krishna? In other words, how can I help that individual grow? How can I help me grow? Is it just being a friend? Is it just being kind? Is it just offering them prashadam? Is it being honest? Um, those kinds of things. But it's very important that we uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, reach out to one another, especially at this time, to connect. Yeah. And think about, you know, I'm sure everybody on this uh, forum already have friends, but think about what is it about your most intimate, deep friend or friends that makes you honor that relationship? What is it about it? And when you, there's several core ingredients that I bet we'll all come up with. Pretty much the acronym that I used for friend, that they're honest, that they're interested, they're encouraging, they're in it for the long haul, they're real, you know, like that. They're not envious of you and your life. Although, to be honest, in the beginning and sometimes for years, Two friends may slightly be a little envious of each other because this is the nature of the material world. But as we serve together and work together and chant, then a lot of that will go away. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and yeah, go on. Um, I feel like the the honesty is is a, such a um, it's a misunderstood notion because people might think that honesty might be too much. And, and this fear of being judged if I say how I'm struggling and things like that. But I feel like honesty is such a medicine because then we find out that, oh, you're struggling with the same thing. And uh, I, I feel like we need more honesty among devotees of how we are really, uh, you know, the process of Krishna consciousness. How are we really working with it? It's, yeah. it's one thing to list the anarthas and list the stages of bhakti and, you know, have like the, your catechism <laughs> down. Um, but it's a whole different story to say, how are you really daily uh, in your, weaving the daily life with Krishna consciousness? I think that's the biggest support we can give each other is to discuss that and how we forgive each other. Yeah. How we forgive each other because indeed a lot of my hurt was the naivete that, oh, it's all devotees, and we're all one big happy family. And then it's like, uh, 
when the devotees went to, I remember uh, when devotees from my country were going to India uh, first time and uh, they were warning each other, listen, just because it's Indian food doesn't mean it's going to be vegetarian. And if it's vegetarian, doesn't mean it's offered prasadam. So, so it's kind of like that if I walk into the temple and everyone's dressed in a particular way and chanting, I still need to have my uh, senses uh, clear, you That's know, right. and see, are you an honest person? Yes. I can be compassionate, but I need to know if you're going to steal my wallet. You know? That's right. Krishna so, doesn't want us to be naive and, and silly because that won't help us or anyone else. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Prabhupada said we should surrender to Krishna by our intelligence. But don't give up our intelligence when we surrender to Krishna. And I think that's a very, very, we should think about that every day because intelligence means we have to have the ability to know what to do and what not to do. We have to have the ability to discriminate between sharing with this person and that person. So, you know, it's very important. And to realize, as I said, there are different levels of devotees. And that's all right. We don't have to be upset because they, if they stay in the process of Krishna consciousness, they will make advancement and we will make advancement. But still we relate to them to the degree of whatever their particular level is. And we always, always, always be that good example for others. That's very important. And sharing, sharing our experience is the most you know, you, you're a parent and you, you, what, you, you, you're at home and you've got your children and somebody comes by and the TV is on. They're devoted from the temple and you think, oh, they chant 50 rounds every day and now they see my children watching TV. You know, but much better to be honest about wherever you are. That devoted chanting 50 rounds may have some other challenges that you don't know about or that may be very similar. And that's why it's good not to judge uh, just encourage, support, share. That's the key. Yes. I just want to add something. Chandra Prabhu, please yes. feel free to connect with Vaishnavi Ministry. And I'll drop my email for you there as well. So yeah, I just, I just posted in chat that I actually have the Zoom where I can post as well if anyone's interested to read sure. something together. Yeah, we can maybe connect offline. Um, I just have a suggestion. Maybe we can split up into smaller groups, Krishna Nandini Prabhu, and yeah. they can have their own group discussions so you can get a little bit of rest and then come back and do a little more sharing. How does that sound? Oh, I think that's very good, Sweeney. Um, yeah. And, and so while you're having your, how many is it on here? Can you tell? We have 43. Oh, very good. Okay. So while you're having, maybe we should give them the devotees, they can discuss whatever they want, but maybe if you have like uh, four or five groups, you would maybe pick a particular topic and discuss that. And maybe I, let's see what I have something. Um, uh, maybe one of the things I would like to somebody to talk about is what are some of the ways that we can be more personal in our dealings with devotees? Because that's another one. Um, another group could discuss what are some of the ways that we can find out who we should have a deeper level of trust with. What are some of the trial balloons or situations that would help? And then maybe another group could talk about um, how we talked about our challenges to having friendship, but uh, how would we relate our uh, how would we relate our need or desire for friendship with the other? It's kind of like Sachi Priya's question. How do we see that as important? And what are some of the ways we do to show that's important? Friendship in our lives. So those are just a, a couple of suggestions. Okay. Sure. So I'm, what I'm going to do right now is maybe I'm going to split you all up in smaller groups, maybe groups of five. Mm -hmm. Sound. Um, and then for maybe 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we can come back and do some more sharing. Very good. I like My that. hands raised, but we'll take that after we come back. Yes. And Krishna Nidhi Prabhu, please feel free to stretch and, you know, to uh, rest or. Thank, thank you, guys. All right, I will do that. Okay. <laughs> so, just give me one minute and I'm 
please accept the invitation to join the rooms and I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, let's see. Okay, we'll see you in 15 minutes. Um, Urvashi Prabhu, did you want to join your room or did you want to stay right here with me? Okay, you're on mute. I can move you to your room. Did you get a notification to join a room? So I just uh, join this breakout room? Yes. Okay. If you click join, and then you'll be in a room. Hey, Haribo, I just went to my breakout room, and there was nobody there. I'll move you to another one. Thank you. Sure. Uh, that happened last time, too. I did. Yeah, yes, I keep being isolated people. and quarantined. <laughs> oh, well, let's make sure that doesn't happen. It must be my karma, right? <laughs> Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to find okay. my list and then move you to a room that doesn't have too many. Throw me randomly somewhere. <laughs> uh, where are you? Where do I not see you? Hmm. Let's see. Which room were you in? Oh, okay. I really don't see you. I'm going to try to see if I can manually. You're on mute, but I'm going to try to see. Maybe people were just late and showing up. Yeah. So, let's see, let me move them here. Wow, so it's not letting me assign you a room now. Give me a minute. Sure, take your time. You're still here. <laughs> I have no idea. I put you in a room and then you pop right back in here. <laughs> it just wants you to stay with me. 
<laughs> uh, I think we should. I bollocked it up by coming back in. Yeah, so now I don't see you at all. Yeah, I was just like waiting in there and there was like yeah. a person with the camera off and a mic off and they weren't responding at all. So I just <laughs> was like, well, I don't think anyone's coming in this room. <laughs> yeah, now all the rooms are closed. Oh, well. And it doesn't let me assign you to a room. So you're stuck with me. Oh, not stuck. <laughs> See, everything happens for a reason, right? I'm sure it does. Um, okay. Yeah, so where are you from, Margaret? Man Mohini is my name, my devotee Man name. Oh, and, wonderful. Where are yeah, you from? Yeah, and I can't change my name on Zoom because that's my professional name. And oh, I, I, can do, I can do that for you. It won't change all my other Zoom interactions, will it? No, just that. Oh, you, yeah, you can change it if you like. How do you do that? I need to learn that because I conduct a lot of these meetings myself. I didn't know you could do that. Um, so what you do is um, on your name, like if you see your picture, uh -huh. you have three dots on the top. Right. Just hover your mouse over your picture. Click on the three dots. Mm -hmm. You should see an option that says rename. Oh, I don't see that when I click on my three dots. You don't? No, I get mute my audio, stop video, or hide self view. Oh, you just changed it. I did. You did it. You yeah. did it. Yeah, I did. But I don't have the power to do that. It's interesting. Oh, you, everyone has the power to do that. No, seriously. <laughs> I get only, I can only mute, stop video, or hide self view. I'm reading my menu when I click on those three dots. Is that right? Anyways. We're good. Thank you. Hmm. Now, I hope that doesn't happen when I get into a meeting at my university and people are like, what? No, Who's it won't. It's, okay. just, it's just for this. Particular. Okay, very good, because I won't be able to figure out how to get it to go back. <laughs> but it's very simple. If you go to, uh, what view are you on? Are you in a gallery view? Um, yeah, right now I am. Okay, so you should be able to see a picture and you don't see three dots there? You see I do. Hmm. Yeah, I do. It says, it's right in the top right hand corner. There's three little dots in a blue box. Okay. Another way to do this is if you go to the bottom of your screen and you see participants. Right. Click on participants. Yeah, I see that. And find yourself. Got myself. And again, you'll see an option for more. If you click on, uh, you know, there's probably you'll see a CC or if you hover your mouse over your name or your camera icon, you should see mute and more. Uh, let's see here. Do you see more? Yeah, I see mute and if I hover, I see the three dots, but when I try to click on them, they disappear. But there you are- see more? Yeah, but when I try to click on it, Oh, there, that's at the very bottom of my screen. And when I click on it, there's like a coffee cup, a clapping hand, a thumbs up and down, and a clock. Well, those are reactions. Yeah, and so, but I don't have... Um, no, no, no. You have to click on participants. I did. And then you have to click on uh, find yourself in the participants. And then right when I hover my mouse, I see mute and more yeah and all i see is mute oh lord yeah when it I has it has to do with the view and and it, it depends on which meeting i I'm, I'm in zoom meetings all day also so it, it just depends on the view for example some instances some meetings i can change my name and this one i'm having the same thing as you I can't oh. change my name. So, Thomas so. Sundra, you also can't change your name in this no, one? No, no, no. And I know okay. where to go to do it. I just can't do it here for, oh, some, okay. for some reason. We don't have the power. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I haven't. 
I feel, that was powerful. So now that I've changed my name in this meeting, it's not going to be changed in every meeting, is it? No. Okay. I can change it back before you leave. Okay. No, no, don't worry about it. I don't mind it being Man Mohini in this meeting, but like I know, I, 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 and my colleague, I, I need it to be my legal name. And I hear I'm, you. I'm I hear over you. over how to get it back right. I hear you. Thank so, you. So, Krishnandini Prabhu, we can, you know, after everybody comes back, maybe we can now. Uh, oh, I think she left the meeting. Yeah, she did. I think she was probably eating. I saw a bowl or something in her hand, so maybe she. <laughs> oh, who do we have here, Shamsundar Prabhu? Uh, this is Tushani. Say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Tushani. We're so happy to have you. Yeah, she's Daddy's other appendage. Daddy's baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Precious. You want to sing Hare Krishna while we're breaking? Say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Sing it louder. Hare Hare. Hare, Hare Rama. Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Yeah. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> How old are you? Two. Really? She's only two? Yeah, she's two. You uh, are a smart two. My goodness. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right, tell her we're going to say Harry Ball. We're going back on mute. Harry Ball. Harry Ball. Harry Ball. <laughs> so, well, where do you live, my I live in uh, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Right. And you? Uh, I'm from California. California. Yeah. Are those poppies behind you? Um, in the. Um, painting. Oh. oh, there's some flowers. Oh, they look like poppies. I just wondered if they were poppies I can't see closely. I love poppies. And I have a big piece of poppy art that I just bought from an artist because I just okay. have this love affair with poppies. Oh. Those look like poppies. I have no idea what they are. <laughs> So we have we have a few more devotees here that haven't left. I think they'll be all back here in a few minutes. Yeah, no no sweat, no worry. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, just sitting and breathing. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can end earlier. Krishna Dini Prabhu looks like she's in the room. Yeah, yeah, we definitely might give her her break. Yeah, I mean, devotees can stay back, but she's, you know, she should be able to leave and take some rest. It's nice that you do all the tech. Um, I sometimes wish that I, I lead a lot of meetings and classes on Zoom now, and I sometimes wish I had somebody to manage all that so I could focus okay. more. Yeah. I mean, it still hasn't become completely automatic. It's getting there, but yeah. sometimes I'm like, where's this? And how do you do this? <laughs> it's just, it I know. It's been a learning curve, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, we have a lot going on with like Zoom rooms. We, yeah. have, we have all kinds of things going on here. But um, yeah, it's been a learning curve. It has been a learning curve. <laughs> Absolutely. I think everybody's become proficient with Zoom because of this quarantine. You know, I've been teaching people about Zoom and practicing it for three years, and I still wasn't good at it because I just taught it in a business and professional writing class, and my students never used it. But as of last semester now, you're right. It's, I don't even think I need to include it in virtual meetings anymore. I think they've just become like, part of our everyday experience. I'm just so, I've gotten used to speaking out of a box on my computer, you know. Yeah. I don't know for how long it's gonna be like that, but. Yeah, I've gotten used to it too. At first it was very disconcerting. Mm. I'm gonna have to delete, I mean, cut out this portion of the meeting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we're being recorded. No. <laughs> it's absolutely fine, I usually edit it. Oh. I just edit this portion out. <laughs> 
we leave the little chanting though that we had. <sighs> yeah, they should all be back here in a minute. 19 seconds, then get a minute to well, log back out. Maybe we can have some sharing in the meanwhile. And you can contribute over here. Hare Krishna, welcome back. Hello. So we see everybody is slowly coming back. Marat. <laughs> hey, Atma. Hari Hari. <laughs> I am welcome in the prayer. <laughs> okay. So nice to see you. Oh, Everybody was back in a few. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I think your breakout room naturally closed. Oh, no. <laughs> welcome nice. back. The conversations have abruptly stopped. Okay. Has closed. Oh, and we all are back. Hi, Krishna Nandini. Hi, Krishna, sweetie. Hi, Krishna. So, so, oh, Hare, Hare Krishna. Now, be, I love you. I love you too, sweetie. How is it? How is it? I love you too. <laughs> it's the mutual love society, right? Yeah. Listen, before before we all share, my son's a little concerned that I'm going over, and but I'm okay. That break and I'm gonna keep it. Yeah. Uh, could you please mute yourselves, everyone else? Or I'm going to have to mute everyone. Thank you. There's too much static. Okay. So, Krishna Nandini Prabhu, at any point you feel that you need to stop, this is your family. Yes. Tell us, you know, that's it. Okay. I'll see you later. All right. And okay. we're fine. We're so grateful that you're here. And we're so grateful for your association. So, this is everything on top of that is bonus. All right, thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that. Thank now, you. Listen, so two things that I'm going to ask from each of you all that are on the on this session today is a little homework. And um, when you conclude it, I'd like you all, if this is not asking too much of you, Govinda, Gayatri, that when you finish this little request... Name is Govinda Prabhu. Is it, huh? Govinda Priya. Yeah, Govinda Priya. That's what I thought. Okay. So just send her an email and let her know that you are completed, whatever. So I'm going to ask you within the next week to reach out to a dear friend and let them know why you appreciate them in your life. That's one. And the other part is within the next week to reach out to someone who's not such a dear friend. Maybe even, but I want this in, in particular to be a Hare Krishna devotee. Maybe even a person that you have a little annoyance with. It doesn't have to be, but you're not close. And find one thing that you appreciate about them and tell them. And then let Govinda Priya know when you've done it. And if any of you all have any interesting experiences from it, that would be good to hear. So you're clear you're going to do two things. Is Reach out to one of your dear friends and let them know one reason why you appreciate their friendship. And the other is reach out to a devotee who's not a dear friend and let them know one thing you appreciate about them. And then please just share with Govinda Priya that you did it. And then if anybody has any interesting uh, uh, results from that, let us know. Okay, are you all willing to take the friendship challenge Yes. Okay, good. Perfect. So now, Govinda, maybe we can have each team share a little something that they talked about. Absolutely. So 
So please feel free to unmute yourself and represent your team. Um, and yeah, I'm going to share my email. I know these questions are coming up just in a minute. I'll share my email and the Vaishnavi ministry email. Feel free to write to us whenever you've finished your tasks. And if you have any interesting realizations, please put them in there. So we'll share that with Krishna Nandini Prabhu as well. Yes. Um, yeah. And you can unmute yourself and please share. What, were you, what was your realization while discussing in a smaller group? Something that you heard that really struck with, stuck with you? Something that you plan on practicing? Please share with us. Any takers? My name is Rita. Um, I think what was really uh, a takeaway for me was the question itself of how of the question about how can we be more uh, closer to devotees. I think because at least for myself, I tend the devotees that I have association with, I'm in service with. So we're so focused on the service. Uh, and the communications we have are all service related that sometimes we, I would say most of the time, we're not really um, exploring where we are ourselves. And I think that question really opens up a lot for my own thoughts and to start engaging in a deeper way um, beyond only service and also beyond, as we were talking earlier about only talking about Krishna, that we can, we can have compassion, whether a devotee or non-devotee. We can, by showing compassion and love for others, that is showing and being in Krishna consciousness. So uh, I think I do that, I feel I do that well with non-devotees, but with the devotees, I'm actually just so focused on the service. Yeah. Thank you, Anita. I think it's so important because that's the chief element of friendship, to go when you're interested in your friend's abilities, their likes, their dislikes, their, you know, experiences. And if you notice in, in all the Bhagavatam, all the Leelas, when the devotees meet, they take time to ask about each other, how you doing, how the children, how's the farm, how's the cows, you know, like that. <laughs> and get to really, uh, you know, in a, in a, they take time, even if they're coming out of some uh, apparent emergency. To, to greet the devotees, appreciate them, and ask about their well-being. So these are examples for us to do. And I'm, I'm really grateful that you appreciated that question because it's an important one. See, Krishna consciousness is an ocean that has no bottom. So our, our relationships should really get deeper and deeper. And when we relate to devotees, even though it's not like deity worship or buying flowers, that also is a part of devotional service. That's part of devotional service that comes under uh, serving, serving, period. You know? So we, we should think of our friendships as a part of our devotional service to Krishna and whatever it takes to develop those friendships in a healthy way. Thank you, Anita. Jai Hare Krishna, I would like to share. Please send my humble obeisance as my All the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. Um, someone in our group brought up a really, really nice point, which is how can we um, cultivate more of a friendship with ourselves and being more personal with ourselves as a foundation for um, you know, friendship with others. So we had a really nice discussion because I think as women particularly, we may generate so much energy externally to others, our families, our spouses, our friends, and may not be able to take that still time with ourselves. So some of the um, things that came out of the conversation um, was being connected to our needs. And the more we're connected to our needs, we can be more insightful and connected to other, others' needs. Um, being grateful, like developing a... Um, gratitude practice. So like when you're distressed, just think of five things that you're um, grateful for and that can kind of shift your energy. And the other point was um, just taking still time for ourselves. 
And, you know, I'm a person who tends to be really busy and move a lot. So someone had suggested me to just set a timer and every half hour just stop. And maybe for a minute, like, you know, take a breath or take a look out the window or, you know, just things that can kind of help us still and connect with ourselves and our needs. And then we can be more present for others. So I was really grateful for that point that was brought up in our group. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's a really perfect beginning to be friends with yourself. And I love the list that you all came up with. Another thing I would add is to sit down and actually say, what is it that you like about yourself? What is it that I like about me, Krishna Nandini Devi Dasi? And really be honest and, and talk about that and acknowledge those things that you like about yourself. I can't remember the exact details, but my youngest son and I were having a conversation recently. And he said, Mata, why, why did you do it that way? And I said, son, if I had done it any other way, I wouldn't have liked myself. Yeah. And then that made me kind of think about, okay, yeah, so what was my sort of value system that I chose to honor and, and do something that I could have gotten a more superficial, nice response from, but because I, I wouldn't have liked myself if I did it that way, I did it, you know. So also thinking about what are some of the, uh, Prabhupada says Krishna has given all of us, each living entity, something extraordinary. I love this. And what are those as we develop in our Krishna consciousness, that extraordinary ability comes out. And for many of us, it may be multi-extraordinary ability or quality. So think about what is it that you like about yourself? And you should like something about yourself because you're part of Krishna. <laughs> and he's 100% likable. So since you're part, find some things to like. <laughs> I, I really appreciated this opportunity, Matza. Thank you. Uh, this, this has been such a wonderful experience. In our group, we, we talked a lot about um, that, the idea that making it a priority, making friendship a priority, mm -hmm. and how to do that. And the challenge is sometimes being, uh, for some people, maybe uh, having trauma of, of failed friendship attempts or, or uh, just working through that. But really uh, one of our, at least one of my big takeaways was how valuable these friendships are especially with these other Vaishnavis mm -hmm. and um, to just making it a priority and and um, working towards that good and despite the take, challenges yeah you can take baby steps and mm -hmm. the, the irony about love or friendship is that you have to be willing to be hurt in order to really achieve it. Mm -hmm. So if you always think, oh, I gotta protect myself, if they reject me or whatever, you, you'll never have those deep friendships. So it's, it's a risk that one takes, but the beauty is because Krishna really wants us all to be connected on a deeper level, that's really Krishna, because when, when we are, that, that makes him happy and it's good for us. And so he will help us as, as, as he see our sincere uh, endeavor to be a good friend ourselves and to seek other friends. We'll, we'll see the hand of God in it. And some friends come to help shine us up and polish us a little more than others too. We gotta remember that. <laughs> They're not always the nicest, but the sincerity is there and the care is there. And so um, we appreciate, you know, we try to see it from Christian. But it's very, very important. May I share from our group? Oh, yes, please. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna, dear. Krishna Nandini. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Our, Hare Krishna. <laughs> um, please accept my humble obeisances, everyone. Um, it's such a joy to be here. Our group um, talked about, you know, having, having faith um, in Guru's mercy and Krishna's mercy that, you know, Krishna will send someone into your life that you know, will fulfill your prayers, maybe not how you expect. Um, and that just, you know, just that kind of faith uh, and trust in Guru and Krishna and an intentional prayer for that will build a really nice foundation. So maybe we can discern um, mm -hmm. when it's, you know, a good thing to confide or, um, 
and we just appreciated, you know, just having, we, so, a, a couple of us were pretty isolated mm -hmm. um, from other devotees and we were really appreciating just that 15 minutes to be together in this electronic atmosphere, yes. but it felt so wonderful. So uh, just that was such a gem. We were just appreciating the gem of that 15 minutes of being together too. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Shiganjali, for sharing that. That's so important because actually friendship is an expression of Krishna to us. When we have friends, that's actually Krishna coming as our friend through these people. And when we develop these kinds of friendships, that's us developing friendship with Krishna. And if we kind of see it in that light, it puts a whole new twist on things. Just like um, I often share with people that when a person gets married, they make a vow. This is a person with spiritual intention with their husband, but they also make a vow with God, Krishna. And really, if we're accountable to Krishna for that vow, both husband and wife, it's everything. And really, for me to realize that Krishna is my husband and he can come to Tariq or whatever channel he needs to be to take care of me, his devotee, and he does that. So the same is with friendship. Krishna is our real friend, Sarit, ever well-wishing friend. And so he will come through his parts and parcels to defend us. And if we look at it like that, it's a, it's a really kind of puts it on a different level, you know. So I can say one thing that um, we discussed in our uh, little group mm -hmm. was that uh, in trying, you know, to reach out because you want to create a friendship with someone, Mm -hmm. uh, that we have to be aware of maybe I communicate or I desire to communicate in a certain way, but maybe this other person desires to communicate in a different way. Like one may like to pick up the phone and talk and the other person just wants to write and send emails, but that other person doesn't like to write. So, we have to consider that, not just how we want to reach out, mm -hmm. but if you know that about a person, and if they've called in the past and you haven't returned their calls, maybe they're thinking, well, they never returned my call. And if you're sending emails and you're not getting anything back, so you're, there, you're thinking, well, they don't get back to me. But we have to go deeper. And, and realize that about the other person. And that's very true, as we all know in fr friendships, you can't judge the other person like yourself, because that's a different person. Right. So that was an interesting conversation. And I just want, if I may, read a beautiful passage to you that somebody told me the other day. Please. So listen carefully, because there's parts to it, but it's short. Okay. I asked for strength, God gave me brains and bronze. I asked for opportunity. God gave me challenges. I asked for love. God gave me those to help. I received nothing I asked for, but everything I needed. I'm just getting tears in my eyes. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Beautiful. If nothing I asked for, but I got everything I needed. So. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, Rebecca. That's beautiful. And I love how um, <laughs> you really identified some of the things that we pray for sometimes. And we said, wow, Christian, you didn't answer that prayer, but he answered. Um, I asked for love and he gave me someone to help. And really, that's really how you develop love is by serving someone. You know, this Krishna knew exactly what to do when he created this feeling um, between parents and children's mother. Because the moment that baby is born, the mother is serving, serving, serving. So, unless she's um, 
you know, mentally unhealthy or drug addicted, she, her natural instinct wanted to be the love that day. And so we developed loving friendships just like that by serving our friends and considering, like you said, Ravashi, what their particular uh, approach is. It's not about me, you know, we, we, we're, we're trying to consider what the friend wants. And if the friend is considering what I want, then nobody will be left out because each one is looking after the other. And it's good the varieties in, in life because it helps us not to be so impersonal. It helps us to know that there are many different ways that people can express, you know, you've all heard of the five love languages. And when you love somebody, you're supposed to figure out what their language is and speak to them in their language. And they're supposed to figure out what your language is and speak to you in your language. And that's real love because then you're being you're hearing and understanding each other, you know. And so friendship is like that. We have to learn the language of friendship or love from our friends and speak to them in that language. And they should do the same for us. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, I can speak from our little group. Yes. Um, so we were just three people with Sita Priya Davidasi from uh, New Vrindavan area and from, with Isabel from Jersey City. And uh, we started with trust and vulnerability and that, you know, we put forth, we invest, and we somehow spoke of um, creating uh, awareness where we watch whether our friendships are balanced. Mm, uh, not, not to grow selfish, but to see what is happening in that friendship, whether we're giving maybe 80% and they're giving back only 20% to see what can be done and whether this is the environment, these are the people that appreciate us, or maybe there are new environments as we progress with maybe our lifestyle in Krishna consciousness and change who we can associate with and how people understand our lifestyle. Um, and so it ended up with the discernment. Um, also, uh, I have this huge attachment to kind of appreciate any spiritual discussion, even if people are kind of disagreeing or to me, there's no hierarchy. And I wanted to share just the nice number from the Shema Bhagavatam, which is in the Canto 4, uh, chapter 22, verse 19. So it's 4, 22, 19. And this is uh, the conversation with four Kumars and Maharaj Pritu. And um, the, the verse basically acknowledges that in the discussions of devotees, the whole world benefits because of the energy that is being exchanged. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the, the investments that we bring in, uh, just like, uh, uh, one of us was saying about this investment in the friendships to see whether they are uh, contributing as well uh, to cherish. I'm going with the later share here of uh, appreciating yourself, being friend to yourself, is to appreciate what you're bringing in and to see where that gift is being appreciated, to, to bring it where it, it can be multiplied. Um, I also wanted to share really briefly a pastime that experience with uh, Malati uh, uh, Devi in New Vrindavan. And it was mm -hmm. probably one of the best devotee conversations that I've ever had. And it was very uh, brief, but, but really beautiful. I'm, I'm just gonna share it briefly. Um, I told her uh, briefly that I may stop for a cup of tea in the evening. And in New Vrindavan, you don't have street lights. It's when it's light is out, light is out. So I had to walk to her cabin by the ponds and the peacocks. And so I'm walking in the darkness, finishing my rounds and just trusting that I'm not gonna fall in the water or, or you know. Uh, and I see Malati's cabin and it's all lit with the lights and she's in there. And so when I arrive chanting, I see that she's sitting and also chanting her rounds. And so I knock on the door, she opens the door and I sit down and we're both chanting. And then she gets up and still continuing chanting and she, uh, puts on the kettle and pours some tea and then puts the tea in front of us and we keep chanting and so we chanted and we chanted and then we just kind of smiled and nodded and maybe said good night and then I went home and it was the best conversation I've ever had it was just so peaceful 
we were just like chanting and chanting and we had a cup of tea and then I went home. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that. Too. Thank you. That was a lovely example of friendship and when you don't have to have a whole lot of words to connect with another person who cares about you. And, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things that will happen in a deep friendship. Anyway, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Mataji, Hare Krishna, thank you Hare so much. Krishna. Um, I, will, I will translate something that she's saying. She's okay. doing it to me, Devidaki. She said that um, uh, as a Mataji, one of the Mataji said that um, sometimes we just uh, focus on the service, but we don't create moments with the uh, devotees. She said that that's important that we invite somebody to eat or invite some devotees to go out together. You know, even we have to uh, be concentrated in Krishna Kata and Sadhu Sangha, but we have to create those moments because if not, we just only concentrate at the temple, on the service, and that's all. We, we need to create that. As it was in the start with Prabhupada, was uh, coming to America and they preach, uh, he preached to... Um, friends you know malati yamuna everybody were friends each other and that we have to remember and be like them create friendships create those moments these moments yes very good and just like uh the devotee just shared with that moment that malati created when she went to chant with her and they had the tea together and didn't talk a lot was a very special and we should make an effort to reach out to devotees in a way that brings something new and different to our relationship. You know, uh, say you want to walk together or do something. Of course, now with the isolation, you have to be a little more creative, but very, very important to do that and to, um, you know, connect with each other. This connection is really the ultimate goal. It's not knowledge. It's not renunciation. It is loving relationships. That's it. That's the ultimate goal of everything we do. The gopis, what do they know? They love Krishna, they love each other. I remember I was reading uh, years ago and it said that Srimati Radharani, bless our words of Srimati Radharani, was on a boat with 10 million of her friends. And I had to wrap my head around <laughs> 10 million, 100 friends, 1,000. 10 million. So it just really struck home how that Krishna just expands in loving ways and all of it is very precious and powerful and that expansion can go on and on and on and on. And so that's the idea of, of loving friendships that it keeps expanding and we get to be a part. One day we might be on that boat with Sri Mati Radharani. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krishna Nandini Prabhu. Any last comments? I don't want to go over time. Okay, sweetie. Yeah, this is very I, time. This discussion is wonderful. I can stay here all day. <laughs> but just to respect your health and everybody else's time. If okay. anyone has any last comments or any other sharing, please feel free to do that now. I just want to share. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you so much for this wonderful association. And Krishna Nandini Prabhuji, my dear, dear Prabhuji, thank you so much. I know this is not easy for you, but you're so Krishna consciousness, you're just above your body. But <laughs> Thank you so much for giving Thank us you. your association. Thank you for giving me your association. <laughs> what, what a sweet surprise to see you today. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, these, this wonderful sharing and this is so inspiring. You know, this is what keeps us going in Krishna consciousness. Yes. I wanted to share um, a few more offerings that the Vaishnavi ministry is going to begin offering. We are realizing that, you know, devotees need to take care of their health. Devotee needs, devotees need to take care of their diet. And we want to make that very inclusive. 
within our lifestyle. And as Vaishnavis, we should be able to do that together. So I have two wonderful yoga practitioners, Carly and Tiffany, who are a part of our team. And they're going to start offering yoga classes. So we're going to have two yoga classes a month. Um, oh. Sponsored by the Vaishnavi Ministry and anybody can join. Look out for these details. Our newsletter will be coming out soon. Our next um, presentation is going to be by an Ayurvedic physician from uh, UK. And she's going to give us an introduction into Ayurveda and how to, you know, to practically apply that in our daily lives. We just noticed that a lot of devotees are seeking these aspects elsewhere. So we thought as Vaishnavi ministry, we should provide a platform where you can, um, you know, facilitate. Our job is to facilitate all the needs of the Vaishnavis. So please take advantage of these offerings and share them with other Vaishnavis. Um, and the only reason we do these registrations and all of that is because it just helps us screen the crowd rather than you know, just having devotees pop in and pop out. It just, you know, when you spend two hours together like this, magic happens. You know, I'm seeing same faces coming. They want each other's contact information. And the magic really happens when we develop these wonderful discussions and relationships. So thank you so much for actively participating. Thank you so much, Krishna Nandini Prabhu. Uh, we're so very grateful for your time. Yeah. For the legacy that you're, you are, you know, giving us this compassion, the love, the extension of, you just emanate these beautiful qualities that we all aspire for. Thank you to Sham Sundar Prabhu for helping us facilitate and Tiffany and Carly, and we have Jai Sri Radhe and the whole team of the Vaishnavi Collective. I'm so very grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And don't forget everyone, do your homework, even I'm gonna do it. So in one week, it's all be complete. Yes. So please do your homework. Uh, <laughs> we'll send you in a newsletter. But uh, down in the chat message, our emails, Vaishnavi Ministry NA at Gmail or my personal email. You can use any, preferably the Vaishnavi Ministry emails. We have a team that will screen through. And we put all of that together and share these offerings. So thank you so much once again. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji, for organizing this. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.